So let us see image segmentation today under digital image processing. This image segmentation, the segmentation actually divides the image into constituent parts or objects. So we'll be dealing with these objects and the level of subdivision, it depends on the problem being solved. So it depends or uh, it varies from problem to problem. And this segmentation stops when the object of interest for an application that has been isolated. We have isolated those objects which are of our concern. For example, for an air to ground target acquisition system, interest may lie in identifying uh, vehicles on a road. So segment the road from the image and segment contents of the road down the objects of a range of size that correspond to the potential vehicles and then no need to go below this level or segment outside the road boundary because this is our object of interest. So autonomous segmentation is uh, one of the most difficult task of uh, image processing and largely determines the eventual failure of or success of the process. And these segmentation algorithms for monochrome image or images are based on one of the two basic properties of gray level values. First thing is your discontinuity. The other is your similarity. For discontinuity, the approach is to partition an image based on abrupt changes in gray level. That is the discontinuity, abrupt changes in gray level. And the principal areas of interest for this particular aspect are the detection of these isolated points and detection of lines and edges in an image. So for similarity, the second basic properties for segmentation. For similarity, this the principal approaches are based on the thresholding, region growing, region splitting and merging. So using this discontinuity and similarity, which we just uh, emphasized on, of gray level pixel values is applicable to both the static and the dynamic images. Dynamic means those images which are varying with the time. And for dynamic images, the concept of motion can be exploited in the segmentation process. So this concept of motion can also be uh, used. Now let us see how we detect the discontinuity. The detecting continuities, for example, points, line and edges, they are generally accomplished by mass processing, much as in the spatial domain fit examples. So uh, we use the response equation like this. R is equal to W1, W1, Z1 to W9, Z9. And this is from I equal to 1 to 9, W, I, Z, I. We have discussed it in the earlier uh, discussions of image processing where we were using some kernel and mask for edge detection. So mask used for detecting isolated points, which is different uh, from a constant background, will be like this. You see and you observe that all the summation of all values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 8. Minus 8 plus 8 is 0. So this detection of isolated points is accomplished by using this mask. And the isolated point is detected if the response of the mask is greater than a predetermined threshold. That is this R. This R is actually greater than some threshold. So this measures the weighted difference between a center point and its neighbors. So the mask is the same uh, as the high frequency filtering mask. As you have seen, this is the high filtering uh, mask. And the emphasis here is on the detection of points only detection of point. So only difference that are large enough to be considered isolated points in an image are of the interest. Now coming to this line detection, line detection this would involve the application of several masks, not one mask. So in the creation of mask, the intent is to form a mask or a set of masks that will respond to one pixel thick line in a given orientation given orientation, uh, maybe you can understand it as a direction, horizontal, vertical, then 45 degree means a horizontal, vertical, 45 degree and minus 45 degree. So these are the four masks which we will be using and uh, for horizontally you see these are the minus ones, vertical these are the minus ones, these columns 
and for uh, this uh, 45 degree you see these are the positive ones others are the negative ones and vice versa here so with the constant background the maximum response occurs when the line is lined up with the center of the mask so we need have to note that the preferred direction of each mask is weighted with a larger coefficient than other possible directions see these are uh, the direction of each mask which these are weighted with larger coefficient these are the coefficients these are the coefficients larger coefficients than the neighborhood this r1 r2 r3 r4 four mask this denote the response of the uh, mask so if at a certain point in the image this ri is greater than rj for all j not equal to y this is need to be followed that point is said to be more likely associated with the line in the direction of this mask i then this edge detection edge detection is by far the most uh, common approach for detecting discontinuities in gray levels so isolated points and one pixel thin lines are not common in most practical application we have to uh, formulate and we need to do some uh, assumptions uh, assumptions first so an edge is a boundary between two regions with relatively distinct gray level properties so these regions are sufficiently homogeneous so that the transition between the regions can be determined on the basis of gray scale discrete is about so if this is not valid some other techniques will be used what is the basic idea behind most edge detections are uh, these are the computation of a local derivative operator right so these are the derivative operators and image of uh, dark stripe on a light background or vice versa or uh, the a profile of the lines in the image that is uh, modeled as a gradual rather than a sharp transition and edges in images tends to be slightly blurred as a result of sampling so we have the first derivative and the second derivative the first derivative is the magnitude the value of the first derivative the magnitude detects the presence of an image and the second derivative what it does the sign tells the type of transition that is light to dark or dark to light note also the presence of zero crossing at image so this is the image of dark stripes on a light background okay and this is the profile of lines in the image these are the these are modeled as a gradual rather than sharp transitions this is the first derivative and this is the second derivative now we have this gradient operator the first derivative at any point in the image can be computed using the magnitude of the gradient del f that is gx gy del f by del x del f by del y this is a matrix so the magnitude is uh, very easy to find gx square plus gy square under root or rather we can just write it as because this is similar equal to uh, mod of gx plus mod of gy and the direction of the gradient vector, uh, vector in the angle will be tan inverse of gy by gx so the derivative may be digitally implemented in several ways but the sobel operators are commonly chosen as they provide both the differencing and smoothing the so sobel is the most commonly used operator and the smoothing is advantageous as derivative operators enhance the noise okay so uh, because we want that uh, derivative operators uh, enhancing noise to be smooth also that is why we use this sobel operator the gradient computation using sobel operators is very easy this zevit 4 7 8 just make it twice then you know you have to uh, use a difference of this from z1 z2 z3 z1 z1 z2 z3 z1 z2 z3 and uh, this uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 so this 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 and this 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 just make it twice and gy will be what z3 okay means means z3 then this is z1 this is z2 this is z3 Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For this Z seven, Z eight, and Z nine, Z seven, Z eight, nine means this minus this. Then this will be Z three, Z Z three, Z six, and Z nine. So now we are coming to the column. This minus this. Okay. Now coming to the Laplacian. We have already earlier discussed it uh, also. This Laplacian. 
So Laplacian is the second derivative or second order derivative operator which is given by del 2x by del x square plus del 2f by del y square. So uh, with a gradient this uh, may also be implemented digitally and by 3 by 3 mass the most common for, for is uh, 4z5 minus z2 all events, all events. So the basic requirement for the digital Laplacian is that the central coefficient be positive, the other coefficient be negative or zero and there are some and some of the coefficients be zero all so indicating a zero response over a constant area uh, this uh, laplacian uh, actually responds to changes in intensity it is seldom uh, used in edge detection for several reasons for why as a second derivative operator it is typically unacceptably sensitive to noise right the laplacian produces double edges and this is unable to detect direction and for this uh, laplacian is used in secondary role of detection for establishing whether the pixel is on the light or the dark side of the edge. That is why this Laplacian may be employed. So more general use of this Laplacian is to find the location of the edge using this zero crossing property, location of the edge. The basic idea is to convolve an image with this Laplacian 2D Gaussian transform like this exponential minus x square plus y square by 2 sigma square. You know this sigma will be this standard deviation and this r square is equal to uh, r x square plus y square if you assume then the Laplacian uh, will be like this r square minus uh, sigma square this is the Laplacian of this h function okay we had taken the derivative that is why it has become like this so this is the original image this is the original image uh, when converted with the Laplacian and this is the thresholding, the, the convolved image to yield a binary image. And this is the zero crossing from the binary image. See from this, the beautiful image, the edges can be seen so profoundly and so elegant. So this was uh, the basic idea and we'll continue our discussion. Thank you.